Hi, this video will help you to understand the evolution of public administration as a discipline or as a subject of study and its present status. I am Dr. Ravi Kumar, Assistant Professor of Public Administration. Please don't forget to subscribe this channel and press the bell icon to get new video updates. So let's start. This slide will contain evaluation of public administration from two distinct perspectives as an government activity and as a subject of study. As an government activity, public administration is as old as our civilized life. Since ancient times, many kingdoms had evolved their well-developed systems of administration and ruled their territory. But as a subject of study, it is just emerged in the 19th century, means much more recent and has passed through several critical phases of development. In general, evolution means the gradual development of something over a period of time. So, eminent contributions made prior to Woodrow Wilson. Many scholars like Cautilia, Plato, Aristotle, Machiavelli, Montesquieu dealt with public administration, but they did not call it as public administration. Cautilia's Ardhashastra may be regarded as oldest text on public administration. Ardhashastra contains guidelines on governing a vast empire, covering many aspects of internal administration, military strategy, diplomacy, and economics. Plato and Aristotle both described the style of administration in Greek city-states. They have also dealt with administration. Machiavelli's book, The Prince, contains much more about administration, and in this book, European kings were advised on properly administering their government. So let's go to the next slide. Montesquieu work the spirit of laws highlighted the administrative functions of the state. He believed the power of government should be separated into three branches. Legislator should use only lawmaking powers. Executive should undertake only law enforcement functions and judiciary should perform only judicial functions. Any combination of these three functions into a single or two organs is more harmful and dangerous for individual liberty. So he considered that separation of powers is essential for securing the liberty of people. So let's go to the next slide, the cameralist. The cameralist were a group of people with a set of ideas, partly from public administration, economists, partly politi political scientists and partly lawyers. They undertook systematic research on topics related to public administration. They tried to improve administrative practices to serve the absolutist monarchs of Germany and Australia. Towards the end of the 19th century, Hamilton in his work, The Federalist also discussed about the public administration. The Federalist Papers was a collection of essays written by John J. James Madison and Alexander Hamilton in 1788. The essays urged the ratification of the United States Constitution. The Federalist Papers are still widely considered to be the most authoritative source for determining the original intent of the framers of the Un United States Constitution. In 1812, Charles G. Bonin's Principles de Administration Public, in, it, it is in French, it is considered as first separate treatise on the public administration. You can see that he included an administration title in his book. But still, as a separate field of study and research, it was not involved as such. This is all what happened before Woodrow Wilson. Many scholars dealt with public administration, but they did not call it as public administration. So let us discuss the stages in the evolution of public administration from Woodrow Wilson in the next slide. This slide contains the evolution of public administration. It can be broadly divided into five main periods. First period, it's in 1887, public administration dichotomy has been started. And in the second phase, principles of administration from 1927 to 1937. And the third period, era of challenge, 1938 to 1947 and fourth phase crisis of identity that is from 1948 to 1970 
and fifth period from 1971 and continuing that is public policy perspective or public administration as public administration so now let us know about each stage of evolution in the past public administration as an independent and separate subject of study began in 1887 in the united states of america and that country continues to enrich it even today so you have seen that kautilya is from india and plato aristotle machiavelli montesquieu cameralist group hamilton and many more all were from europe but they did not start as such a different systematic field of study but it is originated and developed in united states of america once again want to clarify that they dealt with public administration but they did not call it as public administration and one more uh, reason given by rumki basu she was an indian scholar she gives the reasons for this why it is in usc she says that scientific management which was started by fw taylor was a big push and the 19th century industrialization which gave rise to large scale organization and one more thing the emergence of the concept of welfare state replaced the police state so the government should take care of its people as opposed to police state which is not welfare state and the movement from uh, to remove the spoil system the movement for governmental reform due to negative consequences of spoil system spoil system also called patronage system it is the practice in which the political party winning an election towards its camp uh, towards its campaign workers and other active supporters by appointment to government post and with our other favors so this is why it's uh, started in united states of america so let's go to the next slide public administration dichotomy dichotomy means a division or contrast between two things that are entirely different the credit for initiating as an academic study of public administration goes to woodrow wilson and later he became the president of united states of america wilson emphasized the need for studying public administration as a discipline apart from politics so initially he made efforts for separation of administration from politics this is known as politics administration dichotomy one of the objectives proclaimed for separation was to prepare specialists for governmental positions as you know that woodrow wilson originated the politics administration dichotomy by observing that it is getting harder to run a constitution than to frame one the context for wilson's comment was calling for sound principles of administration that would enable government officials to run a constitution well wilson argued that administration totally lies outside the proper sphere of politics so he was the first scholar who mainly set the tone for study of public administration through his essay entitled the study of administration which was published in 1887 hence he is regarded as the father of the discipline of public administration and after woodrow wilson it is the frank z good now wilson's view was further developed with conviction by frank z good now for evolving the discipline of public administration with his book politics and Ad- administration which was published in 1900 contended that there were two distinct functions of the government that is politics and administration according to good now politics has to do with policies and administration has to do with the execution of these policies public administration as an independent and separate subject of study though it is began and began in 1887 in the usa but the movement furthered by j good now and others and finally ld white 
introduction to the study of public administration the first textbook completely devoted to the discipline so Woodrow Wilson started Frank Zay good now furthered this movement and in this stage Leonard D white introduction to the study of public administration the first textbook completely to devoted to the discipline so this this is all what happened in the first phase so let's see what happened in the second phase that is principles of administration the second phase in the evolution of public administration how began in 1927 with the publication of Willoughby's book principles of public administration the central belief of this period was certain principles of administration such as economy and efficiency will improve will increase the efficiency of public administration in this stage the task of the scholars was to increase the efficiency of public administration through adopting the principles of administration taylor's principles of scientific management had significant effect on public administration he believed that the scientific principles were universally applicable and gallic and Wurwick claimed that public administration is a science and coined the acronym postcarb to study the public administration gallic said that postcarb activities are common to all organization Basically, postcard view emphasizes on the techniques of the administration. In postcard, P stands for planning, O stands for organization, S for st staffing, D for directing, C O for coordination, R for reporting, V for budgeting. These periods were the golden years of principles in the history of public administration, and public administration has commanded a high degree of respectability. So let's know about uh, the third phase that is era of challenge. During this phase, both the first and the second phase ideas were completely challenged. The first phase idea, what was that? Politics and administration dichotomy. It was totally rejected. It was argued that administration can't be separated from politics because of its political nature and role. They said that administration is not only concerned with policy implementation but also deals with policy formulation so there is a close relationship between politics and administration similarly the principles of administration was challenged by simon he he said that principles are unscientifically de derived so there are no more than proverbs or myths the main theme during this period was the advocacy of human relations approach to the study of public administration. It was considered as a proverb and naturalistic. They criticized it due to its depend on formal structure of organization. It emphasized on human aspects of administration and focused to study the psychological and social problems of the industrial workers as well. So let us see about fourth phase that is crisis of identity with the rejection of politics administration dichotomy and principles of administration public administration has suffered from the crisis of identity some scholars returned to the fold of political science which was the mother science but they were not encouraged by political scientists some others began searching for an alternative and they found the management was viable alternative but in both the situations its linkages either with political science or management the essential thrust was lost that is public administration lost its identity that's why this phase known as period of identity crisis and emergence of new nations set new trend in the study of public administration during this phase the western scholars began to show interest in the study of varied administrative patterns of the newly independent nations this factor largely accounts for the development of comparative ecological 
and development administration perspectives in the field of public administration. Finally, it was becoming increasingly clear that neither political science nor management addressed their interest. That's why this phase is known as period of identity crisis for the discipline of public administration. And finally, the fifth stage, which is public policy perspective or public administration as public administration. In this period, public policy perspective means it is a study of government policies for the people and its pros and cons and how to better the policies. Public administration as public administration is a refers to public administration successful break with political science and management and it has emerged as an autonomous field of study and practice. Despite the uncertainty, public administration declared that it is an independent discipline with the birth of NASPA. It means National Association of Schools of Public Affairs and Public Administration. It was established in 1970. It was founded as a successor to the Council on Graduate Education for Public Administration. It was an organization to discuss and improve public administration course quality. The formation of NASPA raised great self-confidence. Additionally, considerable progress also has been made in refining the applied techniques and methodologies of public administration. And globalization has also set the discipline free from the traditional bondage. What is traditional bondage? Traditional bondage is a rigid hierarchical structure which paved the way for more flexible, less hierarchical and accommodative type of discipline to serve the citizens more effectively. So what is globalization? Globalization is a process by which people and goods move easily across the borders. One of the effects of globalization is that it promoted and increased the interaction between different regions and population around the globe. Thus, during this period, public administration successfully emerged as an autonomous field of study and many universities and colleges have introduced public administration as an independent subject. And there are a number of leading research institutions in the discipline of public administration like Indian Institute of Public Administration, American Society for Public Administration and in Dr. M.C. R.H.R.D. Institute of Telangana, a separate department of public administration has been created for training purpose to improve the administrative efficiency. So let us um, understand the basic themes in each stage of evolution. In the process of evolution, during the first phase, efforts made to separate administration from politics. Initially, Wilson emphasized the need for a separate study of public administration and Goodnow posited the politics administration dichotomy. Goodnow argued that the politics has to do with policies and the administration has to do with the execution of these policies. In the second phase, principles of administration, the central belief was the, that there are certain principles of administration and it is the task of the scholars to discover them and to promote their application because they have believed that the principles will increase the efficiency and economy of public administration. The principles in practice outline the main requirement to be followed for improving the efficiency of public administration. During the third phase, era of challenge, both the ideas of administrative dichotomy and the principles of administration was a, a rejected. The main theme was the human relations approach, which emphasized on the human aspects of administration and focused to study the psychological and social problems of the industrial workers. In the fourth phase, loss of lost its identity. With the rejection of politics administration dichotomy and principles of administration, 
public administration suffered from the crisis of identity and the future of the discipline appeared to be a little uncertain in this period. Some of them returned to the fold of political science and some other searched for an alternative. But for whatever the reason, the essential thrust was public administration lost its identity. That is why this phase is known as period of identity crisis. In the fifth phase, despite the uncertainty and turmoil of the preceding stages, public administration has registered progress with an enriched vision. It became truly interdisciplinary and has come closer to policy science. So finally, public administration successfully emerged as an autonomous field of study in the fifth stage and many universities and colleges have introduced public administration as an independent subject. Thus, public administration had to pause several critical stages and uh, evolved as a dynamic social discipline to address the human concerns. And now public administration and politicians have been working with the harmony as a team to fulfill the aspirations of public. So we have seen today, we learnt about evolution of public administration and if you don't want to miss out on the next video, subscribe the channel for an in-depth knowledge. Like, share and comment on the video of whatever changes you want to me to make. So I will inculcate in my next video. So be positive. Thank you for watching till here and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.